this is our new system, and I'll go back to your other system in just a couple slides. I'll explain how do we make it go back to pure liquid, all right? So a small percentage, so when we go out to the toolbar and it dumps out and goes out to the toolbar, there's what's called a refrigerant line. And this refrigerant line, we take a little bit of it out and it's still in pure liquid form and it comes back and it comes back into an inlet or right at the bottom of the cooler, a separate tube. This, this is the same thing on your other, uh, the older coolers, all right? So when you compress, so we have what's called an orifice here. It's compressed down to 3 sixteenths of an inch. In the older cooler, they have a long tube that's 3 sixteenths of an inch. But what happens when you compress or force NH3 into a smaller orifice and then allow it to expand, once you compress it and then you allow it to expand, the pressure drops to near zero PSI. And when it's in that state or that zero pressure state, the NH3 either flashes or cools, whatever you want to call it, and it gets almost 28 degrees below at that flashing point. It gets that cold. You compress it, allow it to expand. It, it starts getting to 28 below zero. And the heat is extracted from the main flow of, this, of the system. So the main flow comes through this big tube. There's a, a big tube right in through the middle. It goes out the end, out the end here, crops around either side, and comes down the bottom. That's the main flow. But as it passes through that, there's an inner chamber. And so we compress it at down to a 3 sixteenths of an inch with an orifice, and it's compressed. Well, what happens? Now we expand it to a half inch. So start to expand, cool, zero pressure states, cooling. We do it one more time. Now this one inch tube is all in the middle and all this anhydrous is going right by that. This one inch tube, we've gone from 3 sixteenths a half inch to one inch that one inch tube is cold. It's cold in there. So as it passes by, it's getting the heat extracted from this one inch tube. We also put a T at the end of here. So as it passes through, if there happens to be any gas at the end of this tube, gas is lighter than liquid, the gas will rise up, the liquid drops down, and then we go, there's an outer tube. So there's a tube that outer tube, and then that's the coolant tube inside. It's big, it just slides right inside there. So we'll take a look here.